I got two words for you. Robot dinosaurs. S tier game, 12 out of 10. I'm gonna close the book on this one, kiddos. But, um, Mr. Pepperwood, I need more information about the game than what's just on the cover. Or ah, no, 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 no. Look at me. No, no, no. Look, look at me. Robot dinosaurs. Okay. Now I am gonna do the rest of this review. I don't know who's still unconvinced at this point that this game is a must play. Uh, so this is really more of a professional courtesy than anything else. Now let me lay it out for you. The most impressive part of the game is uh, easily the mechanics. It's just flat out fun to fight hulking robot monstrosities with a bow and spear. Who would have thought? The combat is all about rewarding precision. You have to dodge at the right time and in the right direction. Uh, and you make one false step and it's robot dinosaurs. You're pretty much done. Every enemy has their own unique set of weaknesses, attacks, movement patterns, and you really have to outthink and outmaneuver them in order to gain the edge. Oh yeah, baby. Master plan time. Now he's gonna blow up. There he is. <laughs> they don't suspect a goddamn thing. That's right, don't mind me, dumbasses. Oh shit! Shit! How did they know? God damn it, how did they know? You can, you know, fist fight the T-Rex if you want to be there for two hours, or you can shoot off its giant arm cannons and use those cannons against it. This game is essentially playing a movie. You're always dodging out of the way at the last second, delivering a killing blow, or shooting the perfect shot in slow motion. I mean, even the platforming makes you feel like a badass. It's so polished. The only part of this game that kind of falls flat for me are the fights with the people. They're not quite as uh, nuanced as the fights with the monsters. Now thankfully, most of the human fights are over pretty quickly, so you can get back to the main event. Killing a robot T-Rex. Obviously. Now I know what you're saying. We get it, Pepperwood. This game is fun to play. But tell us about the real juice of the game. Tell us about what everyone really cares about in 2021. No one cares about gameplay. We all want to know about story and characters. And let me tell you, this game has what you need the story. Now, whew, let me tell you about the storyline. It is inspired. The game has you going through all these ancient ruins, Sherlock Holmesing together, you know, what happened to the earth. And while you're doing all this sleuthing, you're also trying to uncover why there's a death cult that wants your head. I don't want to give away too much, but the main gist is that there's two narratives, an old earth and a new earth storyline. And they ramp up and coalesce into a climax at the same time, and it's amazing. Now I will say the ending does become fairly cliche, good guy versus bad guy, but honestly the game pretty much earned it, and the entire journey up to it is unforgettable. Now the writing for the main characters in this game is pretty good. Uh, Aloy in particular is a John Wick-ass badass who just goes insane on people, uh, but she also has some really funny lines and is a total genius, so cool main character. It's not flat like you thought. Why would I think that? During eclipses, the shadow cast on the moon is curved. So our world is a globe. And Aloy even has smart-ass remarks when you force her to slide on rocks. So much for being careful. The rest of the main cast is equally as compelling. They all have super unique personalities, and the writing for them is great. Uh, some of the side characters could use a little work. Aloy, how did you do that? You killed that demon. Thankfully, the world is so big and engaging that you can easily look past a couple of boring characters. This really isn't an open world game in the traditional sense where you have one big main storyline and then a few cool side missions. I found the side missions indistinguishable in quality from the actual main storyline. They have their own cutscenes, they have their own unique characters. There are giant set piece fights that are just as good as the ones in the main storyline. The fight against Robot T-Rex is not a main mission, it's part of a side mission where you're trying to save the queen from a corrupt state where she's essentially held prisoner. Every scenario is its own unique drama that you come into the middle of and have to piece together and make sense of. There's a Romeo and Juliet plotline where you have to reunite two lost lovers. Everything was different. Even the collectibles, the little things that have no bearing on the story at all, you don't even have to pick them up if you don't want to, they have thought put into them. There are mechanical flowers that come with poems you can read. There are viewpoints that have little vignettes and stories about like life before robot dinosaurs took over the earth. If you're into that kind of thing. 
and the music is so good. God, I can't even start talking about the music because then it, this video is going to be like 15 minutes long, but it's original. It has depth. Uh, there's an article that I'm gonna link to in the description that details the entire music making process. Go check it out. It's super interesting. Overall, on the Pepper scale, which as we all know runs from Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered at the bottom, all the way to Call of Duty Modern Warfare the original at the top, I would have to rate this game a red hot spicy Pepper scale gem. It's top tier, no question. Almost a foregone conclusion. I mean, I said at the start of this video, robot dinosaurs, what are you gonna do? But this game is about so much more than just robot dinosaurs, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. But also it's robot dinosaurs, so play the fucking game. Good meat. 